good afternoon all of you a very warm welcome to our session today and today is a very special day we have invited uh, ms harsha bansal <clears throat> for unlocking the career opportunities by our cv building session and talking about jobs and career in actuary she is senior in the company willis towers watson and has cleared nine actuarial exams so we welcome you ma'am today and uh, i'll not take much time because <clears throat> the time is very precious so you can take the session now forward from here thank you praveen bhaiya hello everyone good afternoon as bhaiya rightly introduced uh, i am harsha bansal and i have been working with wtw for the past 3 years in the life insurance domain and without further ado we'll begin today's session that's on how to build a cv from scratch i'll quickly share my screen let me know when you can see it is my screen visible yes it is visible all right so in today's session the contents that we'll be covering are what a cv actually is and importance of a good cv uh, the contents of a cv that make an impact the do's and don'ts in cv building best practices in cv writing the format of a good cv action words that should have that should be included in your cv that will make an impact some frequently asked questions and then we can have an open discussion for any further questions that you might have before i begin uh, can any of you tell me what a cv or a curriculum vitae is actually you can mention a sentence a phrase anything that comes to your mind when you think of what a cv is anybody okay no problem it's a document jo hamare uh, jo hamare employer ko batata hai ki what are we uh, what are we are we eligible for the job and what are the qualifications we have will we be suitable for the job that's agree correctly mentioned so a cv is nothing but a document that represents our life story in a very short crisp yet concise form so it should include everything like she rightly mentioned your education your qualifications your background your career objective etc that will be that we'll be discussing shortly what should be the content uh it is also a life saver during an interview because it enables you to leverage on your cv to steer the course of your interview so what happens is when you apply for a job you mention some things on your cv and you upload it so the interviewer uh, when you actually get the call for an interview the interviewer ask questions during an interview based on the details that you have mentioned on your cv so whatever you mention on your cv leads the course of your interview so it's a very important document uh, moving on to the importance of a good cv so most employers do not shortlist you if you do not have an attractive and a catchy cv even if they do they'll place you at a smaller pay package and assist assign you some non challenging work which we obviously do not want to be in a place so what a good cv actually is is what we'll be discussing in today's session uh, contents of a cv that make an impact this is a very plain basic vanilla format of a cv that i'll be discussing today you can have different formats but uh, obviously it should just be simple and attractive and it should be relevant to the job that you're applying for so i'll be covering the contents in detail uh, later we can go through them right now the first thing that should be on your cv is your name your email id and your contact number moving to the age gender and place of your current residence the very important section that most of us tend to miss in our cv is the career objective or the career statement this should be tailored to your specific uh, job application and to your life goals this should not be copied or uh, 
should not be pasted from anywhere and everywhere. This should be specific to your particular case. Then we should always include our education that's professional and academic qualification. By academic, I mean your plus two, class 10th, and your college uh, qualifications. And by professional, it, should, it would include your extra qualifications, including, say, your CA degree, or if you're pursuing actuarial science, it would include all of those. Moving on to work experience, since we are uh, mostly uh, right out of college or do not have work experience. So this would not be most relevant for us today. But if you've worked for an internship and if you have any work ex, it's always good to uh, add that and mention that in your CV. This is a uh, this this makes you stand out when you're applying for a job. Then moving on to the achievements, uh, be it work related when you were interning or if you, if you have a relevant work experience or it be it educational academic achievements is something that you should always have on your CV. But when we talk about achievement, you should not over uh, mention them. That makes you sound boastful and egoistic. So we should have at least two or three achievements, not more than that. Uh, moving on to the extracurricular activities. Extracurricular activities is again uh, a good, it makes a good reputation. If you have, say, some publications, you have uh, had a journal in your college and your uh, your journal was public publicized back in college, you can include that. Leadership positions in school, college, or say any any other place that you have had that you have he held, you should always include them in your CV. Participation in sports, organizing events, uh, being a part of an NGO. These are very good uh, things that you should always include in your CV if relevant to you. Then your interests and your extracurricular achievements, everything will fall under this section. The final section that we have is others. It's, it's an absolutely optional section. I prefer not to include that in my CV, but if there's say some extra space remaining in your CV, or if you want to include them, uh, it makes an impact for you, then you can have it. it. It includes details like father's name, place of residence, availability, and place of posting. Place of posting refers to the uh, job location that you prefer. And availability refers to the time since when you're available to take up the job. So these are something that the HRs uh, already ask you when you've applied for the job. Uh, moving on to the do do's in CV building, we'll also be discussing the don'ts shortly. But uh, can you all take? a few guesses what what are some non negotiables or must have in in a cv from our qualifications correct context contact details yeah those are basic contents that i've already covered some some do's that, that make you stand out or that makes your CV impressive. Something that should not be missed at all. Presentation. Right. Good format. Correct. Our skills and hobbies. Correct. That comes under your extracurricular activities. All right, no worries. I'll cover them now. Uh, firstly, key in all your ideas as per the format and then delete redundant information. What we tend to do as starters or freshers basically is we try to uh, collect CVs from our seniors or anybody who has, a re who has had a relevant position before and then we try to edit for ourselves. This is an absolute no. What we should either we should instead be doing is we should be downloading a format. Say, for example, the format that I'll be discussing today. You can take a copy of the format and then put in whatever is relevant for you. So you should start it from scratch rather than editing somebody else's CV. And don't worry about the length initially. Jot down everything and anything that you want to include. And then uh, when you want to uh, fit it within your required length, say one page or a two page or CV, then you should start deleting redundant information. Say, for example, you have held a position as a class monitor in school, whereas a class representative in college. So you might want to uh, weigh which one is more relevant and which one do you want to include. If you have a work experience, then you would obviously not want to include things like class monitor or class representative. Instead, you'd want to include things like being a project manager at so-and-so uh, company that's more relevant for your position. So that way, uh, you can then delete redundant information instead of just copying and pasting uh, whatever uh, 
the CV that you have from your seniors or somebody else. The, what happens is we tend to miss relevant inf information that's relevant to us. We only focus on whatever they've mentioned and we edit it accordingly. So that is something that we should avoid. Moving on to uh, someone correctly mentioned right now, presentation formatting. Focus on formatting, spelling, and grammar. This is at this is of utmost importance, and this is a non-negotiable. Uh, spelling mistakes and grammatical mistakes uh, makes a very bad impression. The interviewer gets put off by the fact that there's a spelling or a grammar mistake, and that makes you unfit for the job that you're applying for. So this is, please do check your CV after you've finished. Uh, get it proofread by somebody if you're not confident on the grammar bit or your spellings. But this should not happen that a CV goes to an interviewer with a spelling or a grammatical error. Next is your CV should be tailored to the description of the job that you're applying for. Say, for example, you're applying for a, for the job of an actuarial analyst, but you've done an internship in, say, content writing or marketing or uh, PR, which is not at all relevant in, in the actuarial domain. So you might as well exclude it altogether. But if you have done an internship in the field of, say, data analysis or some presentations you have prepared for, say, some insurer, which might be relevant in the actuarial domain, th that, that's something that you should include. So always tailor the dis uh, your CV to the description of the job that you're applying for. Every time you apply for a different position, please make sure you're editing your CV accordingly. All right, moving on to the next, the document name for our CV should be first name, last name, dash profession. So in my case, it would be Harsha Bansal, dash actuarial analyst. Simple. Uh, the next point is CV should always be shared in the PDF format. So what happens is uh, when we share in some different formats, say a Word or uh, a Notepad or Excel or any other format other than PDF, the interviewer or anybody, the hiring agency, the HRs, might not receive it in the same format as that we sent it in. So they might be using different softwares or whatever. But the format remains intact when we share it in a PDF form. So please, please always convert your uh, Word documents to a PDF before sharing it with the HRs or the uh, companies. Uh, next is always place two references ready for your candidature from either professors at college, people who are placed in a good career path and you know you well. So for uh, instance, you are applying for an actuarial job. Again, because we are mostly doing act we're all doing actuarial science. So you can have one or two or uh, one reference from somebody you've worked with on a research project back at college. And the next could be, say, Praveen, who's who's well known in the actuarial industry. Who know you as well as people in actual domain know him. So these would be two good examples of references for your uh, CV. Mo uh, up until now, does anybody have any questions? Am I going too fast or is it fine? Ma'am, can you explain the third point? Uh, is it this one tailored to the description of the job you're applying for? <laughs> So when I when I mentioned, uh, say, for example, you're applying for the role of an actuarial analyst, but you have, say, internship in a marketing or a content writing role. So I don't think that is relevant to the job of an actuarial analyst. So you might as well want to exclude it altogether. But when you've done an internship in, say, uh, some domain that in, that uh, wherein you analyzed some data and you prepared some graphs, uh, where you also prepared some presentations, or you have worked for an insurance company where you have seen bits of insurance part, anything and uh, everything that's relevant for an actuarial domain, you might want to include that. So you always have to edit or amend your CV according to the description of the job you're applying for. So say, for example, you're applying for the role of a very junior actuarial analyst. So all of this data analyst uh, and things would be relevant. But when you're applying for the position of, say, actuarial manager, so you might want to include positions wherein you have held managerial positions in the past. So every time I cannot, uh, for me currently, say, for example, when I'm three years into the job and I want to switch or say want to apply to a different company, I might want to include the managerial positions that I'm currently uh, holding at my present company if I want to apply for an actual manager position at some other company. Now my internship experience might not be as relevant, which it would have been when I was a fresher or a starter. So always uh, keep updating your CV as in when you apply for different jobs. Is that All answered? Right, yes, All right. Anything else anybody wants to ask?
Cool. Moving on. Uh, whatever you write on your CV should be supported with a story which can be elaborated in the interview. So like I mentioned, your CV should not be very wordy. Write catchy phrases so that you have something to support, something new to add during your interview. So say, for example, you have mentioned interned at CRY as a volunteer. Just one line in your CV. When you, when you actually get selected for the interview, when the interviewer asks you about your uh, extracurricular activities and when you're mentioning about it, you can elaborate it with a story. Say you've worked on a project at CRY for say past six months or a year or two, then you can elaborate what all experience, experiences did you have, what all did you learn from it and how, how did you add to the society basically. So this is something different from whatever is already mentioned on your CV. This, uh, makes you grab the attention of the interviewer and makes the interviewer inquisitive about you and your likes and dislikes, your personality, your uh, interests, etc. So do not write everything and anything. Uh, do not include everything in your CV. Do not make it very lengthy. Do not make it very wordy. Write catchy phrases so that the inter it makes the interviewer inquisitive about you. And then they ask relevant questions on that specific uh, line or topic, and then you can elaborate it. Also, when I say this, do not falsify information. Say, for example, uh, I mentioned that I've interned at, say, CRY or some big NGO, which I actually haven't. But when they ask me questions on the on those during the interview, and I'm a bit hesitant or I'm not able to answer clearly, it makes a very bad impression of you. Uh, the interviewer might disqualify you then and there for further rounds of the hiring process altogether. So always uh, mention facts and factual details on your CV. Do not falsify information. Moving on to the professional skills that you developed over the years should be highlighted on the CV. By this, I mean uh, including, say, computer skills or data analysis or whatever that's relevant for your particular job that you're applying for. That should all, all be highlighted in the CV. Using action words while documenting your work experience and extracurricular activities. There's, there's a list of action words that I'll be sharing with you guys after the session. That you can obviously refer to that. Uh, this, this, these should be documented with your work ex and extracurricular activities. Mentioning the respective year for all achievements and extracurricular activity. So say, for example, like I was mentioning earlier, uh, if I'm applying for a managerial job now, my uh, my achievements back in school or maybe say later uh, say five to seven years older may not be relevant for the current job that I'm applying for. However, if I'm a fresher and my achievements back in college or school, even plus two would be relevant. So that that's something that would be tailored uh, again. So you should always mention the respective year so that the interviewer knows how old or how recent the achievement is. Um, up next, we have a very, very important point and a non-negotiable again, mentioning your LinkedIn profile via custom link or a QR code. Do not just write uh, your name, say Harsha Bansal slash LinkedIn, but mention your LinkedIn uh, link. You must be knowing that we have, uh, when we move to the end of our profile, we have a custom link for ourselves. If you click on that, uh, the, it, if you mention that link on your CV and the interviewer clicks on that, it, it directs them to your LinkedIn profile directly. So this is very important. As soon as you have this on your uh, CV, it makes the interviewer confident about you. Uh, you'll obviously have it can it can give them a source and a basis of comparison because you cannot you can falsify on your CV, but you cannot falsify on your LinkedIn profile because it's a public platform. So this uh, makes the interviewer confident in you and increases your chances of your CV getting shortlisted. So always mention via a link or a QR code. If you mention your name and you, the interview cannot reach you on, on your LinkedIn, it, it's of no use. So always have uh, your LinkedIn profile in your CV. QR code is something that I would avoid. If you cannot find a link or cannot add a link, you can uh, may uh, include your C QR code, but custom link is always preferable over QR code. The final thing that you should include in your CV is uh, mentioning the date. It it uh, only reflects that your CV is up to date and it's not an outdated one. And keep updating your CV as and when you apply at different intervals. Well, these were some do's in CV building. Uh, now we'll move on to the don'ts in CV building. More important than do's are, I think, the don'ts. These are absolutely to be avoided. At You cannot include them at any cost.
writing cv as a heading in your document we should never write harsha bansal resume or cv because it wastes some invaluable some valuable space and it gives a bad impression of us this is something that we do not include in a cv ever next point is sending cvs which have a lot of empty space so like i uh, mentioned um, you should not increase your font size or increase spaces between your different sections of a cv just to fill the pages uh, there should be a proper font size and a format which should be consistent throughout your cv you should not leave a lot of empty space mention everything on the cv as you'll not be able to come up with i just discussed this previously when i was uh, talking about write whatever on your cv that should be supported with the story so we do not tend to elaborate uh, in a paragraph or say a detailed story in your cv we only write catchy phrases or a one liner if you write uh, a whole paragraph on it you will have nothing to elaborate during the interview so that is something you should always avoid next up is mention full correspondence or permanent address nobody wants to know your permanent address it's just the city or uh, the town that you're currently living in or your preferred job location uh, this also leads to security concerns because your cv goes through a lot of people you should not ever mention your full address next up is mentioning your strengths and weaknesses in your cv i have never come across a cv that has strengths and weaknesses included this is something that a in, that an interviewer asks during an interview but uh, it's it's never a part of your cv uh next up is using word art or fancy fonts anywhere in your cv these these do not look professional so these are to be avoided mentioning a lot of achievements on your cv like i mentioned earlier achievements should be not more than two or three uh, including a lot of achievements in your cv makes you sound very egoistic and proud about your achievements which we do not want to make an impression about ourselves in the first instance Cool. I think these were some uh, don'ts in CV building. Any question up and questions up until now, or we are good to go ahead. Ma'am, please explain first point. Uh, write CV as a heading in your document. Yeah. So, like, like uh, in this slide, we have a heading as don'ts in CV building. So your Word document, that your PDF that will be your CV, should not include Harsha Bansal's CV as a heading. Is that answered? Yes, ma'am. So if I show you, this is my CV. And it does not have Harsha Bansal's CV. It just has my name which I have already mentioned in the format. The first thing that you should have in your CV should be your name and not heading as it's my CV or resume or cover letter. Any other questions? Ma'am, suppose a company Excel demand, Excel demand karti hai. So for like other programming languages, CV mein likhna uh, thik rahega? Yes, you should always include all the professional computer skills that you have. I'll be discussing that in my next section when we cover the format in details. But uh, if this explicitly mentioned in the JD that they want somebody with experience in Excel, and if you have that, you'll obviously include that. If you do not have that, you'll not include that. But if you have experience or expertise in other softwares, you, you should always include that. Okay, ma'am. Okay, moving on, uh, the next topic that we'll be covering today is best practices in CV writing. Like I've already mentioned, proper spelling, grammar, and formatting is of utmost importance. Uh, you cannot afford to send in a CV with uh, grammar and spelling mistakes. Font should preferably be Arial or Times New Roman. This is not a hard and fast. You can have different fonts, but it should look professional and neat. A single font size and type should be used throughout the resume like i told you should always maintain one font type and one font size uh, consistently throughout your cv the next is font size should be between 10 to 12 different font sizes can be used for headings and regular text but uh, the contents should be in the same font size cv should be minimalistic in nature should not contain too much of detail should not be very wordy CV should only contain a brief description of your life story, not the complete story, like I've been telling repeatedly. 
it should be a very crisp and concise description of your life, not the entire story. The purpose of the CV is to get you the interview call. So if your CV is catchy, wordy, and attractive to whoever is shortlisting, it, it helps you get the interview call from your dream company that you've been waiting for some while. However, if your CV is, say, a lot of wordy, they do not spend a lot of time to go through the CV. So if it's too wordy and seeing the length of the CV, the interviewer is put off, they, then you it will not lead you to uh, getting the call. So ensure your CV is appropriately uh, worded. CVs should be typed professionally and be proofread to ensure all grammatical errors are avoided. This is something that I just mentioned. Uh, if you if you're somebody that's not confident of, or if you've not uh, get, gotten your CV proofread, uh, it should be proofread to ensure there are no grammatical or spelling errors in your CV. Moving on to the length of a CV. Uh, like I mentioned, these best practices, these are good to have, not must-haves, or these are not some hard and fast rules, but these are some best practices that are followed in the industry. Moving on to the length of a CV. Ideally, it should not exceed two pages. If you're if you're all freshers or right out of college and do not have any work X, I think it's best uh, length should be a one page or CV, not even two. And even if you have some, say, work X and if you're applying for some other uh, roles, it should not exceed more than two pages. Again, this is not a hard and fast rule. It is a good to have. CV should not have any empty spaces. We've also discussed this. Either it should be one pages or two pages, but not in between. So say, for example, if you've already covered everything and then you include the other section, say your father's name, your permanent res residence, availability, and job relocation, then you might want to exclude that other section to uh, cover the rest of the things in one page instead of having a 1.5 page CV. Cool, I think that was it on the length of the CV. Now we'll be discussing the format in details. We've co covered the contents earlier. Now we'll be discussing each of them in detail and how and where to include those. So say, for example, uh, Harsha Bansal, like I showed you in my CV, should be the first thing center aligned in my document. Then towards the left, we have uh, the email address. Below that, we'll have the contact number. And uh, correspondingly, we'll have the age, gender, and current residence towards the right. Next is very important objective statement. Like I told you, it should not be copied and pasted. It should be something that you actually that is actually the objective and goal of your life. Uh, like I have an example to give something back to the society. This is a very vague statement, not relevant for most of us uh, as actual professionals. But maybe you can include. I'll I'll uh, share my objective statement that I have. Performance driven actuarial analyst with strong communication, quantitative, and an analytical skills, talented at performing risk analysis and using management techniques, excellent analytical and report writing skills, proficiency with databases, programming languages, and spreadsheets. So this is something uh, that tells who you are, what you are up to, what your objective is, and what you bring to the table for the company. That should be a very uh, crisp. It should be not more than two to three lines. And it should not be copied pasted. Moving on to the professional qualifications, like I told you, CA, CS, FRM, CFA, actuarial qualifications, anything and everything that you have achieved apart from your uh, basic uh, graduation is something that will come after the objective statement. Uh, the format goes from year from dash year two. So say, for example, I started my actual profession in 2017. So I'll uh, write 2017 dash to current date because it's still ongoing. Degree name would be actual uh, from IFOA or II, whatever is relevant to you. In the next line, so for us as actual analysts, whoever is pursuing actual science, we could either make a table, like I have one in my CV, we could make a table that includes the course institution or the university name, the year and the performance, either passed, failed, or if you have some uh, exemplary performance uh, percentage or marks, you can also include them. So this will include my institution, whether it's IFOA or IAI. Then your year of qualification, you can have it in descending order. 
the latest one being first, and then your performance. Um, next, we have academic qualification. This includes your school and college uh, marks and uh, year of qualification, etc. Similar format to the professional uh, qualification that we just discussed. Just replace them with your board marks and your uh, college marks. A uh, very important thing that could be relevant here is uh, somebody might want to ask if if we should add in percentage marks. Like I've written and graduated in 2020 with, say, 70% marks. So I would want to avoid if I have something below, say, 70. But if I have very good performance, say, 80, 90, I would always include that. So it makes it attractive if you have good marks. But if you have poor marks, that puts off the interviewer. So never try and avoid mentioning uh, anything below 70 for your, say, college. And in your school board marks, if you have anything above 90, you can add that. Otherwise, you can just say graduated in the year so and so. Um, that was about professional and academic qualifications. Next, we move on to the computer skills, like somebody just asked if we can include other programming languages or any, any other computer skills that we possess. Yes, you should always include everything that you know. With the current uh, ongoing developments and AI being introduced, these are something all companies are looking for. Most of the companies do mention their, uh, in their JD the requirements, if you should be a beginner or an expert at so-and-so software. So they'll assess it via this section. Uh, so these these include things like programming languages like C++, Java, etc. Then your analytical and database softwares like Excel, SAS, SPSS, R, etc. This should also this could also include Python in our domain and accounting softwares like Tally, Tax, etc. Uh, so ev anything and everything that you have, you can mention it here. You can also mention your level of proficiency. So you're a beginner, you're an intermediate, or you're an expert level. Um, assessing your level, I think, would be uh, like I, I did my assessments via LinkedIn assessment tests. Or if you say have some degree or qualification certificates, you can obviously include them in this section. Next, moving on to the achievements. Uh, first, write the year and then awarded with the award name for exemplary performance during the period at say company name. This is relevant for anybody who has a work ex. Say for example, awarded with best employee of the year for exemplary performance during quarter one financial year 22 at WTW. This is just an example. And uh, if you do not have a work ex, say you were awarded with a, uh, awarded with something in college, you can write the rank for say, having scored a distinction in college or say any other exams, you can uh, mention that in your list of achievements. Um, did somebody say something? OK. Moving on to the extracurricular activities. Like I already mentioned, this will include your interests, your publications. Again, your year would come first, say 2022. Your title uh, at journal name, say insignia, if if you're a Zavarian, you'd be aware of that, and a brief description of your journal. Then this section also includes your leadership positions held during school, college, etc. Participation or uh, awards in sports management fests, NGO social activities, even MUNs. So you will always have to weigh which ones to include. Do not over include information here. Uh, whatever is relevant or which you think are more important, you should include here. Say, for example, if I had to weigh out of participation in an MUN or say winning, winning a uh, winning the first prize in a management fest or a board meeting event, so I would want to include the victory award rather than just a participation in MUN. Um, the final section is the other section that I already mentioned is optional. It includes things like father's name, place of permanent res residence, your availability, and your references would also fall under this section. You can support your CV with a final line, conclusion line, concluding line saying, I hereby declare that the above mentioned information is true to the best of my knowledge and belief, uh, Harsha Bansil. 
current date. Date is very important so that it makes the interviewer believe that it's your most up-to-date CV and not an outdated one. Um, any questions up until now? I've covered most of it. Okay. Moving on to the final bit, that is some frequently asked questions. You can obviously ask any other question that you have. So the most asked question is, will a proper CV help me in cracking the interview? Yes, of course. Uh, CV building is one thing. But if your CV gets shortlisted only, will you get the interview call from your dream company? Acing the interview is a separate ballgame altogether. But getting to the interview is via your CV. So having a proper CV is is a must have. The next question is, is the format provided in this document the only format to be used for CVs? No, this is not the only format, but this is a very basic vanilla format. This is precise, concise, and uh, this is neat. And you should always include relevant information for your job. Uh, you can obviously have different formats downloaded and then tailored to your uh, your relevant job. The next question is, how do I improve my grammar and vocabulary? Um, I think this is something that you need to work on uh, over some time. You can take the help of grammar books like Ren Martin or do some online courses. But this is something that that's a non-negotiable for interviewers or anybody who's shortlisting. Like I mentioned, you should not have any grammar mistakes in your CV or during your interview. I think this is very important because every company wants somebody who's good at communication. So this is a non-negotiable again. That was the end of it. Any questions, I'm happy to take. Yeah, ma'am, can I ask? Yes, sure. Yeah, ma'am, like your CV was quite filled because you had quite an experience. But a person like me who has just graduated without any working experience, what should I do to make my CV to get shortlisted? Yes, like I mentioned, most of the details or contents that I covered today was for a fresher and not somebody experienced. And my CV had, say, half a page for WorkEx. But apart from that, it included professional qualifications, academic qualifications, my achievements, and my interests. So these are some things that you should include in your CV. What makes you stand out in today's world would be including relevant computer skills, like I already mentioned and some extracurriculars that might excite the interviewer to hire you. That makes you stand out. Academic qualifications, most of us would have. If you have some exemplary performance in, say, school or college, if you were a rank holder, you might want to include those. If you, uh, ha if you have, say, uh, scored a rank in professional exams, like, <clears throat> say, if you are a rank holder in CS1 or CM1, then actual, uh, in the actual domain who are, say, looking for somebody with extra, extraordinary uh, skills in actuarial science. So they'll that will make you stand out. So that is something that falls under your academic and your professional qualifications. But there's nothing else that will make you stand out uh, if you compare it with somebody who has a work ex. If you compare it with a the fresher, these are the things that, that, that are the parameters that you'll be judged on. So most important being your computer professional skills, at least in the actuarial domain. Okay. Ma'am, as you mentioned, extracurriculars would make us stand out. Uh, what can those be? The cons extracurriculars? Say, for example, I have uh, participated in a commerce fest back in college or say school, and I have won. Or even even if I've not won, I've been uh, I have been a part of it. I've participated, so I can include that. That makes me uh, that makes highlight two aspects. One that I am. I'm a, I'm good at communications. I love to participate in different things. I'm not just a bookworm, or I can be a part of different things at the company level also. And the second is um, it makes them confident uh, in you. If say two years down the line they want you place you, they want to be placed in a managerial position, or they want you to present things to the client. 
so they'll have more confidence in you than somebody who does not have these skills okay ma'am Ma'am, till school we had M U N opportunities, but now where can we find the opportunities for M U N if we are a college student? Um, this is something that will be relevant to cities. I mean, will differ from city to city. I think so. If say you are from Delhi or Delhi N C R, I think there are there are specific. Uh, M U N opportunities shared, but again, these are more relevant during the school. I agree with you. Even I have participated in M U Ns back at school, not after that. But I know I recall a few people, even when they moved to college, they participated in M U Ns. Not sure where and why, where you can find these opportunities. I'm not from Delhi, but uh, the, these will differ from city to city. you can make the best of those opportunities back in school only i think okay ma there'll be other things that will be relevant during your college tenure that will be in commerce fest if you're a com if you're from a commerce background uh, being a part of society say economic society and participate participating in different competitions that are held at inter college level so muns are nothing that will make you stand out it's just participation in relevant field fields uh beat in school or college is that answered yes ma'am and ma'am where we can find authentic uh, courses and other internships i think the best platform currently is linkedin so i always firstly shortlist uh, the list of companies that you want to go for that you want to apply for then shortlist the roles that you want to uh, apply for that you are actually interested in and then look for uh, those roles in those specific companies websites then you can obviously reach out to hrs of those companies via linkedin you there are various job op openings and opportunities uh, you can turn on the not notifications on linkedin these are a few things that you can do to get some internships or jobs Okay, ma'am. Yes, uh, Lashita has raised her hand. Please go ahead. Um, hi, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, uh, I completed my graduation from DU in economics honors, and uh, I started studying actuarial science recently. So, I, as of now, I don't have any exams cleared, and my skills are very limited to eco, and I did a. Uh, I did an internship in at Niti Aayog, so as such, I am not uh, as qualified as the rest of the competitors for the same position. So, is there anything that I can do to qualify to the interview round? So, uh, there's nothing that will stop you from getting an actuarial job. It's just that you you need to showcase that you are actually keen to become an actuary. So, for that, you need to start taking actuarial exams. Obviously, they'll prefer somebody with more exams if you do not have as much as them. but i think uh say knowledge on those fields if you have done um your graduation in say mathematics or statistics or economics is is these are the three things that i can think of that are relevant for actuarial science so if you can showcase that on your cv i think um, that that makes you good enough qualified for getting shortlisted and then like i mentioned computer skills are very important basic excel powerpoint and some softwares like python uh, vba etc are some non negotiables that actuaries are actually looking for all right ma'am thank you any other question Ma'am, is there something like over qualification? Like we have cleared many papers, but no work experience. So this is a myth. This was relevant three years back when I was looking for jobs. So I had cleared a few papers, and I was also told that you'll be over qualified. So you should stop taking exams. But it's nothing of that sort. The more you can clear, the better you're placed. It's not that it that you'll be an over qualified actuary. There's nothing as such. it only helps you get relieved of the exam stress sooner so that you can focus on your work later 
it's obviously good to give your later papers though that's essay and sp series alongside your job because it becomes uh, more relatable the work that you're doing and the papers that you're taking you can relate and you can uh, co uh, coincide the content more so it's advisable but it's not that if you take more exams now that you become overqualified and then you do not get a job it's nothing of that sort okay thank you no problem. Yes, please, Dipali. I think. No, Mama, it was by mistake. No problem. Arjun, yes, go ahead. And you mentioned about NGO. So, is it actually relevant to an act actual interview? Have no, it's it? not relevant to an actual. So th there are stages. One is you're only uh, talking about specifics that are relevant to an actual domain. That will be your academic, your professional, and your work ex if you are if you have some. But then your extracurricular, like I told, highlights different skills, say communications, say your interest in giving back to the society, or any other aspect that you ho hold. So. Those are things that make you stand out. And if you have something additional that you bring to the table than your professional and academic qualifications, it's not a compulsory or must have. It's a good to have. All right, ma'am. Yes, Shreya, please go ahead. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, so I'm in second year BSc Economics. And uh, in the end of the year, I'm going to I'll, I have to do an internship like it's compulsory for me college to do an internship and uh, I've just attempted CS1 and not with a result here so I'm waiting for the result uh, I was just uh, I just wanted to ask you even if I don't clear any exams will I be able to get a two-month internship or something in any actual domain or yes. okay uh, so okay so just by how do I like say in the talk in the interview and like write in the CVs? So, so uh, you'll include your uh, academic and your professional coach, like you've attempted. So, obviously, huh. you know the content, and they might ask the right. question from that particular paper that you've already attempted. Okay, pa ask or fail is a separate thing, even if you hmm. do not pass, you have hmm. that knowledge. Right. So, they'll ask you questions relevant to that paper that you have uh, attempted. So, if okay. you're able to answer those well, it does not matter at all if you clear or not. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, you think that even with uh, before graduation, I I'll be able to get an internship at least. Like, uh, there's a possibility. In, you mean alongside when you're in your third year and you're applying? Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Can you please repeat? Uh, do you mean when you are in your final year and you are constantly applying before uh, graduating completely? Uh, no, ma'am. I mean, like for internship. Like after second year, I have to do an internship during summer. Okay. So for that, will I be able to get? Yeah, internships do not have a gra re uh, okay. graduate requirement. It's okay. a permanent okay. job that has a graduate requirement. Okay, okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Bhumi has raised her hand. Yes, Bhumi, what's your question? For actuaries, uh, for internship in actuaries department, how many papers need to be cleared? Again, like, like I just mentioned, it's it's not a must-have, even if you do not have papers and you're able to answer the basic economics, math, stats questions, if you're able to solve puzzles that are asked during an interview, then you're good to uh, crack that interview and get the internship. But if you have already appeared for some papers, and if you have cleared a few of them, and you mentioned those on your CV, you'll, you'll be asked questions from those papers and if you're able to answer them only uh, which is when you'll be able to uh, crack the interview and to answer your questions what is a good number is no number is a good number the more you have the better but it should not be the case that you've cle cleared 10 papers and they ask you say five questions from five different papers and you're not able to answer three of them or say two of them that's that's of no good and even if you have just one paper clear and if they ask you five questions from that one paper and you're able to answer all of them, then they'll obviously select you instead of the other who's not able to answer questions from those papers that they've already cleared. 
so like i mentioned to shreya just now it's not the number of papers that count it's the number of answers that you're able to take during the interview so okay, say for example if you're in your third year and you're already pursuing actuarial science for the past one or two years and if you've appeared for cm1 cs1 the initial papers those are good to have okay ma'am yes priyanshi ma'am if we have attempted some paper and uh, not being able to clear it so i'm not able to comprehend what you're saying priyanshi can you please type maybe Ma'am, what are the best platform we can look for? Uh, actual jobs. Like I already mentioned, LinkedIn, and then reaching out to HRs directly from the companies that that's that are on your list. Say, for example, if you want to work in the core life insurance side, just an example, and you have say PNB MetLife or any other uh, life insurance company that's on your list. you should reach out to the hrs of those particular companies via linkedin or on the job directly on the careers website of the company or the job portal that they have apply via those uh, get connected to seniors already working on working in those companies talk to them uh, that will help you prepare for your interview if you are shortlisted okay ma'am So there are a few questions I can see in the chat box. I'll answer. I'll try and answer those one by one. So the first one is from Krish. He's asking to what extent sporting achievements matter in a professional CV. Like I told you, extracurriculars are uh, are not a non-negotiable or a compulsory requirement. But if you have those, it it makes you uh, it makes you, the interviewer understand your interests and your areas wherein you can uh, contribute. in the company see for example uh, i am i am a very uh, i have an interest in contributing towards the society so i am interested in social activities like being a part of ngo etc so that when i mentioned back in my interview that made me help grab a position in the csr team of my company so csr is corporate social responsibility again that team gives something back to the site there's a company requirement of if a company has a turnover of say x and above they'll have to con contribute a y percentage of their to turnover towards the society so somebody in my company already knew that i have an interest towards this so they um, approached me for being a part of the csr team so these are things that help you later in being a part of in the company that you're actually working in again for sporting achievements companies do have sports leagues etc and these are just your interest this nothing that will uh, add very much value but if you have this and if that's an achievement that's important to you then you might as well mention say for example you were the sports captain of your school or college for x number of years that is a good leadership uh, skill that you possess so that is something that you should mention uh is that answered krish cool we'll move on to the next question from khushi can we include college societies yes i did mention that already college societies you can always include uh the next question is from priyanshi if you have attempted some paper and not cleared it should we mention them it depends uh like i was mentioning to shreya if she has just appeared for one paper and she's awaiting results on them so she can as well mention those because it will help the interviewer gain information that she's keen on uh, pursuing a career in actuarial science she's attempting for papers right now the current status uh, 
results are awaited but a week later it will be results declared either a pass or a fail if it's just one or two papers that you want them to know that you failed but you still are confident on those papers if if they want to ask some questions on those papers you are happy to answer those so you can go ahead and mention those however if you have a number of papers that are already so do not in, elongate or uh, include them just for the sake that you also have attempted for this paper and you failed you might want to mention them in in your interview after having shortlisted but uh, i would not mention it in my cv cool moving on to another question again from khushi uh, can we mention internships in domains other than actuarial like i told your cv should be tailored and relevant to the job that you are applying for say for example a data analyst internship that you have done might be relevant for an actuarial analyst job however if you are applying for an actuarial analyst job and if you have done an internship in say content writing or marketing or anything else which is not at all relevant to the actuarial domain you might want to exclude that um anushri gupta has asked us is college cgpa important and which score is considered good i think i did cover this when i was talking about uh, academic qualifications college cgpa above 7 is good to have if you have those you should include that if it's a poor score and if you add that it makes a bad impression of you at first so just avoid mentioning that and simply write graduated from so and so college in so and so year and which score is good i already did mention 7 cgpa 70% and above for college and 90% and above for 10th and 12th <laughs> moving on to anjali's question that if someone has done his or her graduation in ba having eco as one of the subject will it have a big effect on interviewer like their chances of rejection is more i did not get your question if someone has done his or her graduation in ba having eco as one of the subjects big effect on interviewer like their chances of if you have eco why would you get rejected and anjali can you please elaborate on the question that you are asking i'm i'm asking if someone has not done honors in economics and having eco as one of the subjects in ba program will the chances of their rejection will be more Like no, 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 nothing like that. Become students more than BA, like that's that's there again. Uh, relevant to the job you are applying for, to the company that you are applying for, etc. Things like that. But if you have had a subject eco and they ask you questions on eco, and you're, if you are able to answer those, it's a good. It's not that you will be rejected just based on not having a uh, an honors in eco. Okay, moving on to Rashka's questions. I was a house captain of my house in school, so should I mention it on my CV? Like I mentioned, your achievement should not be outdated for more than five years. So if you are say straight out of college right now, a fresher, and if you do not have a lot of achievements to include, this is one of the leadership positions that you have held back, and say it was in eleventh or twelfth, so that's still four to five years old. You can have it. but if you have had other better position say a class representative in college or say the head of some society in college that would be a better uh, achievement than this one okay so uh, we'll wrap up now we have covered most of the questions and i think the remaining questions are based on whatever we have discussed already so thank you so much ashadi for being the speaker of this session and i hope all of you found this session like you have found insights valuable in building your cv best of luck and thank you all of you for joining this thank you thank you